Very big concern is I don't want my kid to have Down syndrome and I'm 35 years and older. Why do they worry about the age of 35 and older? Is there a reason? Well, the 35 is not really a magic number. It's well, something like that. You don't actually develop... If the woman's telling the truth about her age, what, what year would you be worried? 35, 38? Well, the actual risk for Down syndrome in, when a woman is about 35 is like a half percent. So it's about 1 in 200. Why that number keeps coming up is because when people are offered amniocentesis, the risk of amniocentesis is about a half percent. So they picked 35 as the that's age that's where it balances the risk. Neutral. Okay. So 38-year-old. Has about a little higher, 0.8 percent. And maybe. about a 40-year-old. is about like 1, 2 percent. And then it starts creeping up. Now, today we have basically very um, kind of like screening programs that are available with a lot of debate about what is the best screening program for Down syndrome to offer a woman. We have a very early test. It's called the ultra screen, which is done around even before like 9 to 10 weeks, 9 to 10, 11 weeks of pregnancy. And that, in that test, you measure the size of the back of the neck of the fetus, what's called the nuchal fold. And along by with ultrasound. that, by ultrasound, and along with that, they do free chemicals in the blood. And the combination of what, what, chem what chemicals are they doing? They do HCG, they do PAPE, and they do um, the nuchal thickening. So the three things together give you the risk at nine to ten weeks, if that's elevated, and they combine it with the mother's age. So they give you a, a risk figure of how likely it is based on these things that the person could be carrying a baby with Down syndrome. If that's elevated, she can be offered an early test called the CVS test, which is done up to 12 weeks usually, and she will know the chromosomes of the baby by that time. There is a second stage at which screening is done, which is at 15 weeks in the pregnancy, where again you do some of the serum chemistry, AFP, estriol, and HCG, and then you give a risk at that point. Then there's ultrasound. Ultrasound can pick up lots of what we call soft markers, which may suggest Down syndrome. Um, so there's multiple levels at which pregnancies can be screened when you're not even 35, or even some 35, 38-year-old women who don't want an amnio could go through the screening tests. And if there's a suspicion, they can be offered the amnio, which is the definitive test. There's only one definitive test that will tell you what the chromosomes are, and that's either the amnio or that early test called the CVS. Say they didn't know, she didn't do anything, and she has a kid born with Down syndrome. If she got pregnant again, what's the risk of the next pregnancy? It's pretty low. So it would be about 1%, we say, because we're not exactly 100% sure what causes that extra chromosome to creep in. It's called non-disjunction. So it's like a pair of chromosomes didn't separate cleanly and two crept into one egg or one sperm. We would say about 1% or her age-related risk, which is at 42 or 45 is more than 1%. Sometimes I think called translocation of, right. they, they look normal. Oh, what's a little bit of blue? Right. About 94, 95% of babies with Down syndrome have the trisomy. The, the whole extra number 21 chromosome, which is what we said, a sporadic event that's, you know, not inherited. But maybe about 3 4% of Down syndrome babies have the extra 20, 21 chromosome sitting on top of another chromosome, which is called a translocation. So it's not lying free. The chrom That's a good reason to test every single baby with Down syndrome. Even though you know they have Down syndrome, you should establish that whether they have a trisomy or a translocation because if it's a translocation, the parents should be tested. One of them could be a carrier uh, for this translocation, in which case they do have a significant risk of another baby with Down syndrome. Do we know why some kids with Down seem to be brighter than some other kids with Down? Is there anything in the genetic markers? Mm -hmm. that's There's no test that can actually predict you know, the severity of the uh, developmental problems. Oh, so some kids have more of a cardiac risk. There's nothing we not see in yet. the genetic shed? Not yet. Not yet. So this is a big problem in genetics on the whole. Well, it's because we have all those other genes and modifying effects, your environment, your uh, interventions, and, you know, your genetic background. They all interact to make the baby who it is. 
So it's hard to predict exactly the severity of the intelligence problems or even the birth defects that could be present.